frozen latte. I love making these some mornings when I don't want to drink matcha. And I've been drinking coffee so much that it's starting to affect my sleep. So I'm really leaning on my coffee alternatives. And Mirror Super just came out with this super brew. I had it a couple times this week and I loved it. It literally only has six ingredients, no artificial sweeteners, fillers, or gums. It's full of superfoods. It has dandelion root, lupin, chaga, coconut milk, black tea, and sea salt. I'm getting a really clean caffeine kick but it's not giving me the jitters and crashes. The days that I drink this, my sleep is not affected so much, but you can also do it hot. I found this recipe on your Super's website. I added a teaspoon of the Super Brew, one cup of oat milk, and then a teaspoon of maple syrup, and it is so good if you're a hot coffee drinker. It smells so good, so if you love waking up to that like coffee smell, it still smells like it, so I love that. The black tea in here is slow releasing when it comes to caffeine, so you're not getting a huge hit all at once. So it's really clean, very clean, very simple, full of Super Food foods and nutrients um, and coffee is something that we drink on a daily basis so to be able to still get that caffeine kick but not all the extra stuff that I don't like about coffee I'm obsessed with this and to get 15% off your first order use code Alexis of everything linked down below including the super brew definitely check it out today I just wanted to kind of sit with you guys hang out and slow down and talk about something that's really really important to me and that is how to truly build confidence that you naturally feel on the inside and kind of tell you guys my story on how I built my confidence over time because I used to be such an insecure girl to the point where I really did not like myself. What triggered this thought and of this video was I did a Q&A the other day and I didn't get to answer a lot of questions. There was a lot going on. I thought I could do a Q&A and then I just couldn't. But I was reading through the questions and so many of you guys asked me how to gain confidence. Something I never really thought about, but it's a really, really personal journey that I've had to go through myself from coming from a point of so much lack of self-worth and just the way I thought about myself and how I've come on the other side of that to a person who genuinely loves who I am. And I've had to go through that journey of building confidence one step at a time myself. And I don't really feel like I hear people talking about confidence like this. I feel like I hear like step one through five, how to fake your way through confidence and do this, this, and this, and eventually one day you will feel it. And I'm like, I tried that. I think those scenarios work in certain moments of life and can be useful. I would still always resort back to this problem because I didn't fix it from the inside out. I could fake it all day long. It wasn't natural to me and I was looking for that natural feeling. Like when you see that person across the street, when you see that person and you know they have the confidence, they feel themselves. And I always just believe like, oh, I'm not born with it. So it's not for me. Growing up, I was literally so insecure to the point I really, really disliked myself. It became so a part of my personality to dislike me. I didn't even realize I was living like this until this year. I didn't realize I was living that way. I didn't realize I was living a life of a girl who was highly insecure with most of my thoughts being negative and doing whatever I could to not be me because I didn't like who I was. I never thought I could be who I imagined myself to be. So therefore I tried being everything else instead. And it was just so exhausting. When I finally noticed what I was doing, I realized how exhausted I was and where this exhaustion was coming from. Now I know a lot of you struggle with confidence and where does it come from? And I feel like the only way I can answer this is by sharing my own experience and breaking it down in a way that is tangible and that you can apply it to your life and I feel like I've looked up and down for answers all over. How do I get confidence? And I feel like people give really generic answers or they say I'm just born this way and it's just like oh okay <laughs> thanks so I want to talk about confidence and maybe helping you look at things inward that you never have looked at or even realized that's what may, may be causing you to not be as much as a confident person as you could be. So the first topic I wanna talk about when it comes to confidence is healing. I think people only think of confidence as a personality trait, either you have it or you don't. And I think a lot of people go through life trying to figure out what confidence is and how do I obtain this thing. The confidence you may lack can come from things you've experienced in your life. Things you've experienced in your life, things you've been told by loved ones, people in school, people at your jobs. You may have been told a certain statement that you've now internalized and 
and you believe it to be true subconsciously. It's affecting your life. The part where healing comes in and why it's so beautiful on my personal journey is I didn't even know that it was my problem. I was like, I want to be confident. Why am I so insecure? I'm confident over here and just not confident in this area. It wasn't making any sense until I went through my own personal healing journey. So why a healing journey is so beautiful and profound is that you get to learn all new things about yourself. Kind of lift the veil off things you've kind of locked away in your memory box and just don't think about. And through doing that, you realized, oh, because of this happened, this is why I act this way. Then you get to break it down and say, does that lie serve me today? Is this lie actually true? And I'll just give you an example. One of your parents would say, you're not very good at schoolwork, you're not very good at homework, and it was a constant remark. Even if it was very simple, it was a constant remark. You as a kid or you as a young adult internalized it as you're not smart and you're not good enough. Anytime something complicated comes up in your life, you go back to that and you resort to that. I'm not good enough, this is too big, I can't handle that. And it starts to start off on small things, but then by the time you're an adult, it's affecting bigger things in your life. And that's why I think healing is so important when it comes to your confidence journey. Spending time with yourself and really going inward to heal old wounds and lies, stories that you continuously tell yourself over and over and over again that is holding you back from your full potential, those need to be addressed first, hands down, because that is what's causing majority of your lack of confidence. And find the source, find the root of why you lack confidence in certain areas of your life or you're just not in general a confident person. So for me, it was really diving deep into my past traumas, things I've been told and really understanding where those things came from. I would write in my journal all the lies my insecurities would tell me over and over and over again, right? I'm not good enough. I'm not capable. I don't deserve that. People don't like me. There's always a problem. There's always gonna be an issue things always end bad, this won't work out, you might as well not try. I would just consistently tell myself these things all the time. No wonder why I'm not confident. I didn't believe in myself at all. Like, where would the confidence come from? I'm sitting here telling myself all day long why I don't deserve things in my life and why I should just stay put. A lot of my insecurities came from keeping me safe. And that stems from my childhood, right? Where sometimes things weren't safe. And I had to learn that and I realized, oh my God, I'm, oh, I protect myself so much I don't even live. Yours may not be that drastic but could stem from the same place. The first part of gaining confidence is healing whatever wound that is holding you hostage and it's time to address that and let that go if you are ready. You have to be able to let those lies go and break free from them so I suggest write it all down. Write the things you tell yourself down. Write it all down and then dissect each one back to maybe where they came from and then apply it to today, apply it to reality of this moment. Is it true anymore? I'm no longer that scared little girl that can't protect myself. I have a voice, I can speak, I'm strong. I've done things in my past to show myself, look, I am fully capable of taking on this task. You don't need to worry anymore. And I literally had to tell myself that over and over and over again until I started believing it. Really addressing where your insecurity is coming from, finding the root and pulling it out. You are gonna struggle, not every single day is gonna be perfect, but you will always have that understanding of like, oh, I'm okay, I can do this. This is a lie, it is not true, I am capable. So the next thing is negative self-talk. And we kind of touched on this in the last topic, but I really, really wanna dive into it. It is one of the most dangerous things you can do to yourself. It is so hindering if you talk to yourself negatively consistently all the time. It's kind of sad when I talk about this because I just lived in the pool of negative self-talk all the time, even in the happiest moments of my life. I honestly started to believe that it just was the way of life and everybody has these thoughts and everybody must be thinking this. It was so bad at a certain point, I didn't even realize that there was anything wrong or that I was doing anything wrong. I just felt an immense amount of negativity 
kind of a cloud over me. I just thought that's that's my life. That's just the way it is. I finally realized how often I think negative about myself. And then eventually it started going around me as well. Nobody wants to be around that. And you have to realize this, if you're sitting there and even 50% of your thoughts are negative thoughts towards yourself, how are you supposed to feel confident? And that's a serious question. You really have to feel those emotions behind those words and really think about it. You are telling yourself consistently all the time how you're not good enough, how nobody likes you, how no one cares about you, you won't make it in life, how this is the way it's gonna be and it's what you deserve, stop trying, you'll never make it. If I just sit there and I keep having these thoughts and I do nothing to correct it, how am I supposed to feel confident? You wouldn't talk that way to anybody else so why make it okay to talk that way to yourself? Why have that lack of respect? You demand other people to respect you, but you don't demand yourself to respect you. It took me a long time to realize how that just was not okay. I have to show up for myself and love myself just as much as I require it from the next person. We shouldn't be talking to ourselves that way. We should be our own number one supporter. So what you can do now to kind of help the negative self-talk is addressing it in the moment and basing it in reality. Simple as that and most of the time, 99% of the time, it's not based in reality. So then you're like, oh, okay, that's not true. And you move on. And then you start to teach your mind that most of those thoughts are not true. Going from speaking about negative self-talk kind of leads me into my next topic, which is being enough for yourself. This topic I resonate a lot with. I went through majority of my life thinking I wasn't enough. I didn't like myself. I had no idea that there was anything wrong with the way I was thinking about myself. It can be so natural to where you think that's just the way you are. That's the way you're wired, so that's the way you're gonna think. But the good news is you can change it and I'm living proof. Say if you're able to go into a room with yourself and you said, tell me your story. What would you hear? What would you physically see in them, right? Try to sympathize like, oh my God, girl. Okay, I get it, I get it. From that experience, it was like a ripple effect. I was able to really, really sympathize with myself and be like, oh my God, it's not that I'm not good enough. I was just hurt. I was just hurt, that's it. I was just hurt and I'm allowing that hurt to control the rest of my life. And you really have to realize like, this is it. This is your body. This was a life you were born into and there's nothing you can do about it. You can't change who your parents are. You can't change the time you were born, the day you were born. You can't change who you were born into. It's just not possible. Once you realize that, it's almost like, okay, you can live your whole lifespan running away from that and wasting it, or you can stand firm in who you are today, realizing like, this is it. This is my life. So I'm not going to waste any another second of it, wishing I was that girl over there. You really have to start building that relationship with yourself, really believing that you are enough even for yourself. If you feel lost and uncomfortable in your own skin or just in life period, a good place to start is kind of rebuilding that relationship with yourself, understanding who you truly are and what you truly want out of life in order to feel fulfilled again. And the crazy thing is, I feel like we always, we all forget, and I forget too, is that we have the power to do that whenever we want. Through spending time with myself and really truly getting to know who I am from the inside and out, the things I love, things that bring me joy again, and allow myself to just be my true self and my most vulnerable self, my most authentic self. But it's really about finding ways to truly fall in love with yourself. And what I did is I spent way more time with myself. I did things that tested my abilities and I was able to talk myself through those moments and be okay at the end. Now I've kind of reprogrammed my mind in a sense like, oh, you just did this and you were there for yourself. You stood your ground for yourself. You loved yourself through this process. You gave yourself grace through this process and you succeeded. So now I can look back and be like, oh, okay, I just did that. I can do it again. Through spending time with myself, I can learn my boundaries. I can learn my triggers. I can learn new coping skills. I can learn a lot about myself. You start being your true self without fear of repercussion. You are able to be vulnerable. You're able to build deeper connections with people because you're showing up as you and as a real person and not who they you think they want you to be. And slowly your confidence starts to build. Another thing I started doing to build my confidence is always making sure I give myself what I need. And this was discovered for me on accident. It was really through my weight loss journey. And I fluctuated with my weight so much. It's one thing I was really, really insecure about and still am. Like I've gained all my weight back and 
I've worked so hard to lose it, to gain it, to lose it, to gain it. But through that experience, I've gained so much more when it comes to my mindset than losing weight could ever give me. And I'm so grateful for that experience. But if I never pushed myself to do that, I wouldn't have this understanding today. Through me getting up when I don't want to, putting myself in uncomfortable positions and trying something new and succeeding at it was only slowly building my confidence up more and more and more. I noticed through that period of time where I was really taking care of myself, every workout, every meal I made, everything in my career, I made sure I was doing it out of a space of love for myself and out of a space of the love for whatever I was doing. I can no longer say negative things to myself all the time when I'm doing positive things. I found it a lot harder for the negative talk to succeed in that sense. When I started giving myself things that I needed in this life and putting myself first before anything else and making sure my cup was full before I was filling anybody else's cup is when I really saw a big difference in my confidence naturally like without thinking right just by action of things i was doing confidence was coming to me and through that process naturally i began to talk to myself positively i began to tell myself how much i love myself and i began to show myself how much i was there for myself and one day i looked around like wow that is power i'm gonna start doing this in other areas of my life too and see what happens so every time i have a really big problem when it comes to craving food i'm a foodie i love food i i grew up eating mountains of food on my plate my mom showed her love through cooking us bomb food bomb food my mom is such a good cook so if therefore now in my adult life i have to work on not always eating that way and it's hard for me it's not easy like i have to think about it i am craving something i want it i get it i order off uber eats once again talk to myself in a positive way like you are fulfilled you are loved that food you are craving you don't actually need it a healthy plate will fulfill you will nourish you will heal your body and you're gonna choose that food because I love you I began to enjoy when I would cook it was not that I was cooking myself a healthy healthy meal is that I was pouring my love into this meal and I was gonna feed it to myself and everything became about self-love and through that process I slowly truly began to really love myself because of the way I would talk to myself to get myself to do these things I naturally started to actually feel that self-love even when it comes to YouTube my career and being on social media it can be so easy to compare yourself it could be so easy to be down on yourself and not and lack confidence extremely and I've been in positions like that and that's why I've quit YouTube in the past and come back quit and come back but this time I wouldn't let myself do that now I feel like I'm coming into myself and I'm being vulnerable, I'm sharing my true self, and it's the most happy and comfortable I've ever been on YouTube. Apply this to any position in your life of what you may be facing. Just ask yourself, what do I know I need that will be good for me, but I'm uncomfortable so I don't do it? None of these suggestions I'm giving you will be an overnight process, but it's things to think about and apply and over a period of time, you'll start to feel really, really good. Really, really focus on giving yourself what you need. You are good enough. What your true authentic self has to say, people wanna to listen to that, so be that. You were born into that for a reason, so be that. And that's insane power in itself. So that's my little take on confidence. I really, really wanted to touch on this because I got so many questions about it. So I hope you guys like it. Let me know in and out in the comments. Um, share your confidence story. I love reading all the comments. I wanna hear about it. That's gonna be the end of the video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I love you so much and I will see you in the next video. Bye.